Session 338 Chapter 3 Verse 14 A Continuation زين للناس حب الشهوات من النساء والبنين والقناطير المقنطرة والقناطير المقنطرة من الذهب والفضة والخيل المسومة والأنعام والحرف ذلك متاع الحياة الدنيا والله عنده حسن المآب. Beautified for people are the love of desires of women, sons, heaped piles of gold and silver, and distinguished horses, cattle, and tilth. Such are the enjoyments of the worldly life, yet with God is the best resort. Chapter 3, verse 14. We continue down the list of worldly glamour that draws men away from defending their land and standing up for their faith. The next item on the list is heaped piles of gold and silver. The word heaped is translated from the Arabic origin qanatir, the plural of qintar. Qintar is a unit for measuring weight, which equals about 144 kilograms, or 317 pounds. Here is a little history of the word. Before quintar was used as a unit for measuring weight, it was used as a unit for volume. In ancient times, a sign of a person's wealth was when he or she would own enough gold to fill the skin of a bull. This volume was called quintar. Later on, rather than using the word quintar to refer to the volume of gold needed to fill a bull's skin, people started using it to refer to the weight of that gold. At first glance, the phrase heaped piles sounds redundant. A heap, after all, is a pile. We answer that such expressions, common in the Arabic language, are used for emphasis. Usually, a word is followed by a very similar word, often derived from the same root, to give it strength. Listen to the following example from the Qur'an. God says, As for those who believe and do good deeds, we shall admit them into gardens graced with flowing streams, and there they will remain forever. They will have pure spouses there, and we shall admit them into a cool, shaded shade. Chapter 4, verse 57 A shaded shade? Let's clarify with an example. When the sun is high in the sky, and its heat is beating down on your head, you look for shade. You can seek cover under the shade of a solid wall. The wall will protect you from the sun, but it will not provide you with cool breeze. However, if you sit under a tree, where there are many levels of shade, you are protected from the sun and you have a nice breeze. Each leaf provides a shade, and each leaf under it provides additional shade, and so on. The space between the leaves allows air and coolness in. That is why we all love sitting under trees. Don't we use the same concept in our homes? We often have two or three layers of curtains to allow just the right amount of air and sunlight in. This brings us back to the verse. Allah described the heaped piles of gold and silver, emphasizing the insatiable desire for hoarding wealth. The next item on the list of life's adornments is distinguished horses. A fine horse has always been an instrument of pride and a sign of wealth. In today's modern world, a man's cars and purebred horses are an indication of status and wealth. The phrase distinguished horses, translated from the Arabic origin musawama, carries many meanings. It means that these horses have pastures where they are free to roam and eat wherever they like. They are not work horses that are only offered hay. Musawama also means that these horses have markings distinguishing them from other horses, such as fancy names, known heritage, and physical traits. Another meaning is that these horses are well trained to be proud rides. The verse continues with cattle and tilth. 
God says about cattle in chapter 6. There are eight in pairs, a pair of sheep and a pair of goats. Say, is it the two males he has made unlawful, or the two females, or what the wombs of the first two females contain? Tell me with knowledge if you are being truthful. And a pair of camels and a pair of cows. Say, is it the two males he has made unlawful, or the two females, or what the wombs of the two females contain? Were you then witnesses when God gave you this instruction? Who could do greater wrong than someone who invents lies against God, thus leading people astray without any knowledge? God does not guide the people of the wrongdoers. Chapter 6, verses 143 and 144 There is a common misconception regarding this verse. Many people mistake the phrase, there are eight in pairs, for there are eight pairs. In other words, they assume that the verse is talking about sixteen animals. However, the proper understanding is, there are eight animals arranged in four pairs. They are two sheep, two goats, two camels, and two cows. The total is four pairs because a pair consists of two items. For example, a pair of shoes consists of two shoes, a left and a right. Cattle have always been a sign of wealth and a source of pride for the owner. So are prime pieces of land. When you hear the word tilth, you think of crops and yield, but Allah wants to remind you that tilling the land is the only part you and I have in producing crops. Allah does the rest. He says, Consider the seeds you sow in the ground. Is it you who make it germinate, or are we the germinators? Chapter 56, verses 63 and 64 Take note that Allah referred to our part in agriculture as merely plowing and sowing. Plowing is the process of loosening the soil to allow air and water to penetrate the top layer freely. Allah, the Creator, has deposited in the cotyledon of each seed all the elements needed to support the germinating plant until the roots grow enough to leach nutrients from the soil. As the roots strengthen, the cotyledon withers or become the plant's first leaf. In other words, Allah deposited in the cotyledons the perfect amount of nutrients to feed the plant until, given the right circumstances, the plant can feed itself from the ground. Good farmers know that the ideal soil to plow and sow seeds is in one that is not sandy, as it does not hold water, nor clay or muddy, as it does not allow air in. The value of all of the pleasures mentioned in the verse, from the desire of women, children, heaps of gold and silver, fine branded horses, cattle, to crops, are summarized in the phrase, Such are the enjoyments of the worldly life yet with God is the best resort. So when it comes to choosing between subpar and temporary pleasures on the one hand and God's company and paradise on the other, the choice should be a clear, easy one. A true believer would never sacrifice eternal pleasure for a worldly one. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Convey my teachings to the people, even if it is only a single verse. Please take a moment to subscribe and to share with your family and friends. Visit us at www.qurangarden.com.